it's another glorious morning here in northern Wyoming. We've had a little bit of a front come in. It's not terribly cold, it's about 25 degrees. Cold enough that everything's froze up so there won't be any mud, which is awesome. And um, had a little bit of snow, some places a little more than others, but nowhere more than just like a half inch at most. A little bit of patchy fog in places, but that's pretty minimal. And it looks like we might have just a little bit of wind that'll help Astro, the dog, and that should be good. Get up here a little bit farther and check the wind. I'm pretty sure it's out of the north, but always got to double check because you don't want to mess up the dog. Always want to work as best you can to where the dog's running right dead into the wind, if possible. spot I've been finding Huns in pretty regular last couple of months so that's likely what I would find but if I found sharp tail I would not be complaining just surprised and years ago I used to even find sage grouse in this field but that was pretty rare even back then and haven't for years so that would be a real surprise Get up here a little closer to this far edge to check the wind. It drops off up here to my left. I follow along that ridge pretty well when I'm running the dog. That's the way the road goes. So that's where I'm gonna check the wind. Right up here, pee in the road. And I know for sure which direction to go. Yep, it's out of the north, going about three miles per hour. I'm gonna go left, to the south, not put the dog out obviously until I get to the, the turnaround spot down there and then work this whole stretch back to the north. Three miles an hour would be good for the dog. Five would be a little better yet, but um, three is definitely better than zero or one. Yep, still out of the north, and it's strong enough it probably won't change in the morning. It's actually coming from our left right here because it's very end of this road. 
jogs to the west, but a quarter mile here will turn and go directly into it. bunch of pronghorns that are kind of distracting Astro for a minute. Hopefully they won't just keep pushing out ahead of us. It's always annoying when that happens. Hopefully we go off to the right or somewhere else. Oh, it looks like they're going to push out ahead of us. Nice group. Oh good, it looks like they're cutting off a little more to the right. Hopefully they'll keep going. Birdie up there. Still birdie working left around that hill. I don't know, he's probably far enough away, he's hard to see in the video. Now he's moving pretty good, must have been some old scent or something. See the pronghorn, they're out there more than a quarter mile away, paralleling our track, but off to the right. A uh, group of them split back and going back south. Either way, as long as they stay over there, it'd be nice. Cause when you got a hundred plus pronghorn running around in front of the dog, it's hard to keep their focus.
Yeah, I think I think they just went over the edge. There might be more. He caught on just from the side wind. He didn't stop quite quick enough. That was awful darn close too. But they looked like they were setting their wings. It was Hans that flushed if you couldn't see him on the, the video. And they just dumped over the edge. Yeah, he thinks there's more left there, but he's flagging a little bit, so he's not certain. Get back just a little bit farther. This is probably good right here. Sure, they're just right over the edge. Good boy. on the wing. Well, maybe. Land it again. I have disappointed Clyde a few times here. Not ended up flushing anything. So he's skeptical of the slip. A good one's here, too. Just over this hill. Down there we're after this. Hopefully he'll be able to find them. Tide's going up pretty good. Closer to the, the top. Find him! Find him! Don't want to make that mistake of going past them. Find him! I might have screwed up again. Expecting to go not very far. Maybe went farther. Astro! Right here! Come on! Find him! Astro! <laughs> okay, they gotta be down farther. Let's go! He's liking the breeze. He's gonna wait on a little longer than normal today. It's a 
Those are the other gentlemen. I've hit this same cubby a few times. It might be getting smart. Find him. It's a crappy place to toss a pigeon. I can't chase him or the dam and the truck if it goes far. Where'd them buggers go? I'll probably flush them on the way back up. Find him! Find him! Get him up! Find him! Find him! Get him up! Get him! Get him! Lights lost most of his pitch, but he's still flying. So I want to push his patience a little. I'd rather he doesn't land. Come on, find him! Oh, woo! Hey! Help! Oh, woo! Come on! Help! Woo! Help! When he gets his mind set on landing, there ain't nothing gonna change him. Break off chasing a pigeon is easier than he'll break off landing on a perch. I put the lure away as soon as he landed. I think these sons are getting smarter and not landing close when I bump them. The way Astro was working that he didn't hit that left side of the road. And close in there as well, until he was coming a little too close to it from the side. A little more thorough search on his part would do better. Okay, now is Clyde still over there? I don't see him. I think he might be the GPS on now. Yeah, GPS, is he still there? Just blending in with the patches of snow. It sure looked like they were landing when they topped that ridge. But I think I got outsmarted by some huns. Wouldn't be the first time I was less intelligent than a bird brain. Hill.
Uh, it was Clyde flying again, probably up to the truck. Just this age bush. Oh. oh. That's a lot of hill. to not fly these suns unless I actually see them land or obviously get a point would be even better but if I bump them and they go over the ridge they're apparently going farther but I've hawked them a few times so it's not surprising they do get smarter I expected him to be dressed right down there in that bits of brush and the bottom of the draw. We can find the spot where he asked for pointed them originally. It's kind of hard to tell from the mixed up lines on the GPS. I think it's right this. this spot right up here. No, it wasn't this close to the edge. It's this spot right up here. Hi Clyde. Okay, right in here. Oh, he's flying again, good. I'm gonna start stooping him. I'm standing in the area they came from, roughly. I'm not seeing anything in the way of tracks are selling. They were obviously here, must not have been here very long. With only the tiny bit of snow, it's hard to see any sign. Yeah, 
and the GPS only gets you within like 20 feet. So we had a, a little bad luck on not getting the point. And then the Huns outsmarted me. Went far, I expected them to go close. And they sure looked like they were landing. But they do that when they crest the ridge. The wing beats the same as wing beat for landing. But it's just a dropping off the edge, sometimes changing directions. Quite a bit of a workout today. Yesterday's flight on the grouse was less strenuous because he caught one. There was no lure stooping. I guess that's enough. I think the next time I come here, I'll bring a, a pigeon that Clyde could kill. I can always toss that because I know that won't go far. It's a pigeon on a, a real long line so he can't go very far. Now we won't turn into a, a miles long tail chase here. And I will be able to reward him if he goes up nice. It would have come in handy today. All I've got with me today though is some strong pigeons and I actually didn't even have them on me during the flight because I knew I wouldn't toss them. Just left them in the truck. I have that and take it with me. I could take a chance on those roughly marked birds and not disappoint Clyde yet again. some grouse leg from the grouse he caught yesterday.
grouse. A little short peel in sage grouse is a good dark meat. Sage grouse is super lean. You can feed pretty good sized crops of it to a bird and they won't gain weight. Sharp tail is lean but not that lean. It's all good nutritious meat. And they seem to like the taste of it. Most of the bones crunch what bones are left so that you can consume everything. Two reasons I don't want to just hold the leg up there and let him eat it. One, it takes longer and when the weather's cold and nasty I don't want to be out here standing in any longer than I have to. And um, two, you have to rely on them to voluntarily give it up at the end and some birds just want to keep picking on it forever. Prairie falcons in particular are bad about that. And then if you take it away from them, you're robbing them. Even though it's a bone with no meat on it, they still won't like the, the fact that you took something away from them that they weren't ready to get rid of. So let's do this. He consumes it all. Put him and call it good. Oh, it's really bummed I didn't flush those grouse because Clyde flew real nice, went up real good. And he lost his pitch, of course, after a while, but he always does that. The time we got the flush, he was up pretty nice. Let's see how high he was. 354 feet. Which for Clyde is a pretty good pitch. He frequently goes over 300 feet, but um, those are always good days when he does. And 4.9 miles total, it's decent lure stooping. Okay, huh? Get out of here, go home, and get something done. I can let my pigeons go quick. There you go, pigeons. It's only about 10 miles from where I was hawking this morning to my house here. And um, we've got a little bit of snow in those last 10 minutes. <laughs> it started really coming down. I guess I 
Got lucky on the timing of my hawking this morning, got it done before it got too heavy. I'll fly Clyde in poor visibility, snow and stuff, but um, it does get a little hard to see them. Anyway, thanks for watching.